Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. Today I'm going to share with you a project that I've made using the So Pretty collection and particularly these looks, cuts, embellishments from Funky Fossil Designs. They're a lightweight ply and I was a little bit unsure as to how to use them at first but I'm just going to show you how easy they are to add to a project. They really add a lovely 3D embellishment and they're ever so easy to decorate. They come in this um, piece of uh, wood uh, and you basically just pop them out a bit like you would perhaps pop out ephemera. Uh, they're laser cut in house by Sarah at Funky Fossil and they're really smooth and you can use paints on them and Boston powders, uh, ink pads um, or you could even just leave them as they are. So today I'm going to show you how to use them to make a really easy card. I've got a white card panel which is five and a half inches squared and I've got this stencil which is also part of the collection and I'm just ever so lightly going in with some tattered rose distress oxide and just ink blending a very small amount of that stencil onto the card panel. I want it to be ever so faint in the background just to add a little bit of extra interest but you can see it there just just very gently. I'm using the Funky Fossil blending brushes because I just find that they give a really good blend. Um, and then I've got a matte layer, which is five and seven eighths squared, which I'm just going to glue the white panel onto. And I'm just using Ranger Multimedia Matte Glue in that bottle. Um, because again, if it oozes out the side, it's not going to leave any kind of marks because it dries matte. So next I've got this stamp set uh, designed by Charlotte Blackwood for Funky Fossil Designs. And it's got these gorgeous stamps in uh, that just really add a finishing touch to a card that's so in themed but I'm just going to use the sentiment from it today which says handmade with love and I'm just going to ink that up using the versifying onyx black ink uh, so that it gets a, a really crisp impression on the card and um, I'm using the all and create acrylic blocks for that uh, I really do find that they give me the best um, stamped image without having to dig out my stamping platform so next is the really fun part and we're going to do some heat embossing. I've got this cork mat which I use to protect my desk when I'm heat embossing. It also means that I can uh, hold elements in place with my pokey tool or my tweezers and um, I haven't got to worry about melting anything underneath. <laughs> so I've got these elements here which I'm going to use today. I've got the mannequin, uh, the cotton reel, a couple of buttons and this gorgeous little bow. And I'm going to use a selection of embossing powders from WOW to do this. I've got a piece of scrap white cut, uh, white paper and I've got my Versamark um, embossing ink pad. As you can see, my embossing ink pad is black. <laughs> and that is just because I've contaminated it uh, with my ink pads. So I this is great when you're embossing with colours that are going to be more opaque or you're not too worried about, say for example, embossing with a clear ink. You want that to be clear. Uh, my embossing pad is no good for that anymore but it doesn't mean you can throw it away you can still use it I do have the refill for the verse mark um, and I do still use it yeah, for a lot of projects that I do so as you've seen all I've done is pressed the elements into the ink pad so that all that sticky ink transfers and then I'm using the wow uh, super fine metallic rich gold and all I'm going to do is just do the base of the mannequin for this and then I'm going to, and I've covered the whole cotton reel. I'm going to tap off the excess and then I'm going to use my tweezers uh, to take out the smaller elements from the embossing powder. And then we can return the excess powder uh, to the um, little bottle. So next I'm going to use the opaque bright white embossing powder and I'm going to cover the rest of the mannequin in that. So it's easy to control where you put the powders. And obviously, when I'm tapping off the excess, I'm going to tip it away from the base of the mannequin rather than towards it so that I don't contaminate any of that gold powder that I've already put on. I don't want to get any white stuck in that either. So for this, we're just going to do a few elements at a time because I don't want the embossing ink to dry. It will stay sticky for quite a while, but because I've got quite a few elements to heat emboss, I'm just going to do a couple at a time. So first of all, I've heated up my Sizzix heat tool uh, to the side of me and now I'm just melting that powder. As you can see, I can use the cork mat to um, place the items on and use my tweezers to hold them in place while I use the heat tool to melt the powder. This way it saves burning your fingers, melting your desk or um, allowing uh, any of the pieces to kind of blow away if you can't hold them down. 
So to add a bit more interest to the cotton reel, I'm just going to dip the ends into the embossing ink pad again. And just this is so I can just add another colour of embossing powder over the top of the ends um, so that it looks like the thread's gold and the cotton reel is going to look white. So we can tap off the excess and then I'm just going to place it to one side on the cork mat while I do a couple of other pieces. So the next embossing powder I'm using is Golden Bloom and this is a gorgeous um, pink with a bit of golden and I'm just going to use that on the buttons. Uh, so again, I'm just inking up the buttons in the ink pad and then I'm going to cover them in the embossing powder. And then for the last piece, I'm using Vintage Romance. This again is a lovely subtle pink and it's got glitter in it. So it's a really gorgeous embossing powder. And again, I'm just going to ink this little section up. I'm not really sure if this has got a technical name. It's kind of like part of the mannequin. Uh, but I'm just going to cover that in embossing powder and we'll heat that through as well. So here you can see the tweezers are really useful for just holding the smaller elements in place because they do blow around. They are very lightweight, so you do need something to hold them in place while you're heat embossing them. And the tweezers and the cork mat are really great for that. So I'm just going to show you some close-up footage now of these elements. Um, and just so you can see how pretty they are with the embossing powder on. The camera doesn't really pick up all the shine, um, but in real life they are really, really pretty. Um, that element as well, you can just see the very small hint of pink and glitter on the uh, piece of the mannequin. And then where we've added the white powder to the gold, you can see that there's like a mottled effect now. So it really gives a kind of uh, rustic vintage vibe to the cotton reel. Uh, I just think it's really, really pretty. So to attach the elements to my card base, um, or card panel, sorry, all I'm using is some Ranger Multimedia Matte Glue. Um, liquid glue should be absolutely fine for this. They're very lightweight. Uh, elements so even PVA glue um, or any kind of glue will hold them in place and I'm just adding a small amount to each of the elements now for this section I really wanted to pop it prop it up and uh, the multimedia mat is great for holding stuff in place really strong once it's dried so I'll just add a small amount of glue to those elements and then I'm able to kind of set one part on the mannequin and the other part on the card base so it just gives it that little bit of dimension and I'm just going to get all those elements uh, glued down now as well. Again, I'm using the Ranger Multimedia Mat for all of these. Um, the, particularly, you want a strong hold for that bow when it's sticking to the mannequin because obviously embossing powder is a plastic. So you want to make sure that whatever glue you use is going to stick to that. Uh, so next, I've just got some white thread and I'm just going to add a small amount of white thread behind the cotton reel. Again, just for added interest and something a little bit extra on the card. And again, I'll just use the multimedia mat to glue that down. So next, I'm going to add that card panel uh, to the front of a card base, which is six by six. And I'm just using some Kalal glue uh, to attach that down. Again, that will just give it a really strong hold. So that's the finished card for today. I really hope that it's helped to show you how easy it is to use these looks cuts or any um, small MDF or ply embellishments that you've got in your stash. They just add a lovely 3D element to cards and they make really quick and easy cards as well. So thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more of my videos. And if this has given you some inspiration or you fancy giving it a go, let me know in the comments what you think to this design. So thank you so much and see you in the next video. Take care.